Okay guys, so I'm gonna go over how to use Excel for your lab reports. Okay, in my procedure, I went a certain number of distance in centimeters. I recorded the time AB using the photo gates. And then I also recorded just the time that it took to go through photo gate B um, for the popsicle sticks. So I can use Excel to do my calculations for me. Velocity AB, that is the distance, so the distance between the two photo gates, which is over here, divided by the time that it took to go through the photo gates, which is right here. I press enter, and ta-da, Excel does the graphing for me. And I don't even have to type that in at every one. What you can do is you can just click and drag, and it'll automatically update it for you. So that cell is A4 divided by B4. This one is A5, A5 divided by B5, and so on and so forth. So again, how to do that is you press equals. That's what signals Excel that it's going to do math. For my velocity B, it was just the width of the popsicle stick was the distance that it traveled. So that'll all be the same at 0 0.9 centimeters, okay? Divided by the time that it took through that photo gate, this one right here, okay? Enter, click, and drag, and it automatically updates them all for me, okay? That's too many sig figs. You can adjust that in Excel by selecting it and then using these buttons right here. This button will give it more significant figures. This one will give it less. Since my times only had um, about three sig figs, I'm gonna go ahead and keep my velocities at three sig figs. Oh, but my time AB had more, so I can go ahead and give these ones another one. That is fine, okay? Now I wanna do a graph, okay? The first graph that I'm gonna do is a position versus time graph. Okay, so how to do a graph is you select the data that you want to graph. I'm going to graph my distance or my position versus the time that it took to go that distance. I'm going to go to charts, okay, and we're going to be doing a marked scatter. We don't want to put lines yet because we're going to do a best fit line, so just a regular marked scatter. And it'll give you your data just like that. But oops. I don't like this. It has the time on the y-axis and the distance on the x-axis. I want to switch that. So what I can do is you right-click on the graph and you go select data. Anytime you have weird data, you can go to select data and manually pick it. I want my x values to be the time. So I'm going to go out and I'm just going to select the x values. I want my y values to be the distance. So I'm going to select the distances. Okay. Now it says sheet 1, B2 to B6, sheet 1, A2 to A6. And let's go OK. And there we go. That looks more like how I want my graph. If I had more than one trial, okay, I just did one, but you could always add another one and add different X values and Y values, and it'll give you different colors on your graph. Next step is to format the graph, because this has no labels, no titles, nothing. One, I only have one trial, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the legend. And then you go over here to chart layout. I want to put a title above my chart. This is my distance versus time graph. Okay, that works. I wanna add a horizontal axis title, or x-axis. That is my time AB in seconds. Okay. I want to add a vertical axis title, rotate it, click on it, and that is my distance in centimeters. Okay. If you wanted, you can also format your axis. Okay. Like, I don't really like how many decimal places that has, so I'm going to go ahead oh, and it, oh, unlink it from source. I'm going to go ahead and take it down to two decimal places because I just like how that looks better. Um, I like having the grid lines, so I'm going to add both the major and the minor grid lines so that it looks kind of like a graph. Okay. And now we want to do the trend line. Okay. So 
we expect our data looks pretty linear, I'm going to add a linear trend line. And it'll automatically fit one through your graph. You can also click on the trend line and format it. I, for example, I want to see the um, equation. So I'm going to tell it to show me the equation. Because if you remember from um, algebra or whatever, this value right here should be the slope of your line. And the slope of a distance versus time line is your velocity. So it's 47. And if you look at my velocity measurements over here, they are all pretty much about 47. Okay. Other things that you can do in Excel is, it, say I wanted this data table to be somewhere. I can add borders to it. And then I could copy and paste it into a Word document. I can do the same thing with my data. Copy or Command C if you're on a Mac. And then right click Paste or Command V if you're on a Mac. Okay, And that'll give you everything right there um, that you would need for your lab report. Okay. Also, things you can do is you can average, okay? So I would go equals, and average is a pretty commonly used function for me. So I would average, and I want it to take the average of these numbers. Ta-da, it gives me the average. What about the average for those numbers? Average of these numbers, okay? And they're pretty similar, so my velocity was pretty constant, okay? 